This is an ISO CG319X uh, 4K native um, film and TV monitor. It's, uh, it's ISO's cheap 4K panel, if three and a half grand could be considered cheap, uh, but it is a fraction of the price of the CG2145, which is the £23,000 monitor, which is a Dolby mastering monitor. It's completely compliant with Dolby standards for 1,000 candelas, uh, peak white uh, um, luminance for, for HDR work, uh, and it covers uh, uh, the same proportion of Rec 2020 color space as a Sony X300 and X310. Um, but this is the, 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 the cheap uh, little brother um, uh, of that monitor. And uh, although it can't hit that magic 1,000 candela per meter squared figure for peak whites, it does about 350, so a stop and a bit less than what's required. It does very sensibly scale the, uh, the Dolby curve, the, the, the ST2084 uh, curve. So it doesn't follow Dolby's um, recommendation of, of display referred but it does give you a, a, an honest and accurate representation of the entire dynamic range of the picture in, in what is a very modestly priced package. Same 31 inch panel, um, and in fact it's the same Panasonic IPS panel that the Big Brother uses, and in fact it's the same uh, panel uh, that the, the Sony X310, the new Sony monitor uses, except in those more expensive monitors, the 310 and the ISO 3145, they are dual layer IPS panels that gives you that perfect sort of like shut down any leak light so that you get really very good blacks um, but this one is a fantastic value monitor if you need to do um, edit suite work or, or QC work ingest or anything you know not as demanding as the final grade uh, for a Dolby Vision deliverable and as well as Dolby Vision it also supports um, uh, HLG the, the hybrid log gamma high dynamic range curve uh, that the BBC and in fact lots of broadcasters are getting behind and as well as that it also supports Rec 709 of course uh, and, uh, and, and a few other standards DCI with a 2.6 gamma and things like that. Um, at three and a half thousand pounds it's fantastic value even compared to the typical kind of five and a half thousand pound uh, 25 inch edit suite monitors the kind of um, 25 inch OLEDs like the Sony A250, uh, the Boland BVB25, the Flanders um, DM or CM250 um, those kind of monitors, uh, because even if all you ever did with this monitor was to use it as a Rec 709 1080 monitor, it's a better monitor than those monitors that cost a couple of grand more. But if you've got any eye on a 4K UHD or um, HDR future, uh, this monitor will kind of see you there as well. As I say, it's not a Dolby mastering monitor, it doesn't do the same uh, peak whites that the big brother of this or the Sony will do. Uh, but it is fantastically good value. I'm showing the, the ARRI camera showreel on here at the moment, which is mastered to show off Dolby Vision, of course. Um, and uh, the point of this little demonstration is to take you through uh, the auto calibration features. This monitor has a built-in calibration probe, uh, which, as you might expect for a three and a half thousand pound monitor, is not as good as uh, a six thousand pound Klein photometer. Uh, it's probably more akin to the few hundred pounds you might spend on Tottenham Court Road for a, uh, a, a little probe like an iWrite or whatever, a Huey, uh, to do your print prep monitor. But the nice thing about it is that although it's not ultimately accurate, they are at least consistent. And of the 28 or so of these I've installed so far, they've all been consistent. They haven't varied much over the few days that I've tested them. And one of the nice things uh, that, that um, ISO offer in their, in their free software application, Color Navigator, is the ability to do what they call a sensor correlation or calibrate the calibrator, if you will. So you can, you can derive all the differences between what the little internal probe says and what my expensive external probe says. And of course, we offer that as part of the delivery um, benefit of buying. Um, you know, we come to your facility and we set that up. And, uh, and then you've got a monitor that can self-calibrate really to the same level of accuracy as, as an expensive 6,000 pound Klein K10A probe or, or something of a similar nature. Being an entirely uh, software driven monitor, uh, this, uh, this display does all its calibrations through, through uh, LUTs that are, that are available internally to the monitor. So if I bring up the, uh, the list of standards that it supports out of the box, you'll see there are um, several. Uh, so REC 2020 is a standard dynamic range uh, setting, uh, but with a wider color gamut. REC 709 is, our, is our, our faithful old HD television standard. DCI is, is P3 color space with a 2.6 gamma. Um, PQ DCI is the same but for, for digital cinema deliverables. Uh, PQ REC 2100 is, is that's Netflix essentially, that is a, a 6500 white point with the uh, 2084 curve uh, to 1000 candelas and uh, 
2020 color um, containing a P3 color space. And then we've got HLG for television work and a couple of computer graphics standards. And you'll notice uh, down there in preset number nine is, is a lot I loaded in um, uh, for a variation on Rec. 709 that I was testing for a customer. Uh, the, the, the nice thing about this monitor is that as well as their own software, which is called Color Navigator, the monitor talks directly to uh, Lightspace CMS, which is pretty much the industry standard for color management. And in fact, that, that LUT at the bottom there, J24X709, I, I profiled that, uh, made the LUT, and uploaded it to the monitor without having to leave Lightspace. Lightspace did the whole thing uh, with my client probe um, without any trouble whatsoever. So here I've got the, the Klein probe pointed at the monitor and I've got um, ISO uh, Color Navigator 7 running on, on the laptop here. Uh, and so the first thing I wanted to sort of point out was some of the, 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 the aspects of the interface here. You can see we've got the, the, the there are the 10 LUTs uh, that you saw when I pressed the, the, the button that popped up the different color standards. Uh, the bottom two are, are marked ADV and that means that they are available for, for you to load customised LUTs into and there's the J24X709 LUT that I talked about previously and there's a spare slot down there waiting to be loaded up uh, and there's our standard dynamic range uh, 3 at the top there, REC 2020 with a 2.4 gamma um, and if I click that it's exactly the same as clicking the, the switch on the monitor so let's put it back to what it should be for this material and um, REC 709 for, for, for good old 1080 HD type work, um, uh, DCI P3, that's a 2.5, if, if I call that up it'll show us exactly where it is, 48 candelas per meter square peak white which is the digital cinema standard and um, uh, you know a DCI white point which isn't 6500 Kelvin, um, gamma EOTF, the uh, electronic to optical transform function which for DCI is a 2.6 gamma uh, with the P3 gamut uh, and, um, and such. And then we've got uh, the same thing, but for HDR, uh, for digital cinema, uh, PQ Rec 2100, which is um, the 2020 color space, with with um, limited to um, uh, P3 color space inside that, and uh, uh, you know all the things you'd expect for a Netflix or an Amazon type deliverable, and uh, HLG and all the others. Uh, so the thing I wanted to show, which um, I'm hoping you can see it on the uh, the monitor as well, was the the um, uh, built-in sensor correlation. So if I run that and uh, do built-in sensor correlation, and uh, my measurement device is a Klein K10A. Klein K10A, there we go. Now the software will retrieve from the probe's head what the, the profile is, and this is all related to um, metamoristic failure. Um, of, of uh, an RGB tristimulus probe, so we have to make sure we have the right um, uh, profile loaded, which in this case is an LED backlit LCD. That's exactly what we've got. Uh, so if we proceed, and you'll notice the, uh, the little probe has fallen down from the, the top, uh, but the first thing that the software is doing is that it's running uh, uh, whites and greys and primary colours um, on, the, on the main part of the screen, measuring them with the Klein probe. And once it's done with that, it'll repeat the procedure with the, with the little built-in probe. Now you might notice that the pictures have, have gone particularly bizarre and washed out. The reason they do that is because the panel goes into native mode when it does this, because it's not actually calibrating the standard we had selected, it's calibrating for the absolute extents uh, of, of colours that the monitor is capable of. So now it's doing the internal probe. You see that little red patch uh, just at the top of the screen there where the probe has fallen down and green and, uh, and through it goes. The whole point of this is that it's measured the same colours through both routes, through both probes, and it can then build a, an offset table uh, that it can then store in its flash memory so that every time you do a calibration, a self-calibration with the monitor, uh, you can be assured that uh, the inaccuracies of the internal probe have been corrected by the expensive external probe. And so if we look now at the screen, it's just kind of on the homeward straight now. It's done all the primaries, it's done some greys and some whites and, and, and near blacks. And uh, here we go. Back it goes in and we're almost done in Color Navigator. And so now we've got a, uh, a set of offsets um, between the two. Now, 
me having banged on about how this external probe is a top quality £6,000 product and the internal probe is a cheap and cheerful little thing, and you might think to yourself, well, these figures look remarkably similar. Like, you know, well within delta E on, on, on the primaries and on the white points. Uh, and the reason for that is that this is my demo monitor, and I've shown this to 100 people in the last two months, and I've repeated this procedure with all of them. So my built-in sensor is as calibrated as any built-in sensor ever could be. But, you know, it, it, it kind of shows the point. So now I'm, 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 I'm happy that my, my built-in sensor is, is matched to my external probe. Uh, one of the other things, nice things I can do, under management policy, I can say uh, enable periodic self-calibration uh, based on, not on usage time, but on a date. And I could say, okay, on a Sunday morning at three o'clock in the morning, when all the, uh, the editors and the ingest operators and, and everybody else is hopefully safely at home, um, power yourself up. Once you've come up to temperature and you're warmed up, do a self-calibration. Uh, and once you're happy with that, go back to sleep. And, um, uh, and, and so when the, uh, when the when when the, all the production staff arrive on a Monday morning, the monitor is as good as it can be. And in fact, all those all those um, uh, test results are stored, uh, and we can export them as a PDF, or we can export them over time so that we know how well the monitor is behaving over time, which is rather splendid. So if I now go to um, if I now hit calibrate on there, and uh, and I select the internal measurement device. Take the uh, the Klein away to so avoid confusion. Built-in sensor, and you'll see it mentions that our reference device is the Klein with the serial number of the Klein. And when we last did that correlation, 